Hello folks. In this video I'm going to review the TTC 450 CNC router machine from Two Trees. This will actually be my first time using a CNC router, but as some of you know I am a woodworker and carpenter by trade and do have experience working with laser engravers and 3D printers, so that experience did help speed up the learning curve a bit. For the price, this machine has a relatively large working volume of 460 by 460 by 80 millimeters and comes with either an 80 watt 7000 RPM spindle or a 500 watt 12000 RPM spindle. My experience with trim routers told me that I would need the 500 watt spindle to do the type of work that I want to do, so I requested it but Two Tree sent both spindles anyway. It does require a bit of assembly out of the box which took me around a half an hour to finish. The specs say that it has a max engraving speed of 800 millimeters per minute with an accuracy of 0.01 millimeters, and it can work both wood and plastic, but also soft metals like aluminum and copper too. The frame and rail seem strong enough for the job, but we'll see if they actually are later. The frame fastens together simple enough with a few bolts and a rubber leg mounted in each corner, but my first and probably most obvious mistake in the rush to get this put together was putting the spoil boards on upside down so the bolt heads were exposed. The Y-axis rails are all pre-assembled and just bolt to the frame with a few screws in the front and back. Then I fastened the X-axis motor in place before installing the gantry and Z-axis. Next I installed the limit switches for the X and Y axes and connected the drag chains that carry the wiring harnesses. Then I fastened the controller in place. Most of the wiring ends up tucked away inside the left rail guard and extruded channel. This machine has a touchscreen terminal display that allows working offline through the provided TF card without needing to connect directly to a PC, but if you prefer to work through a PC then it can be done through a USB cable or a Wi-Fi connection. You can see there's a significant difference in size between the 80 watt and 500 watt spindles. The latter comes with its own bracket to fasten it to the Z-axis, as well as an external variable speed controller. Finally, I fixed my mistake from earlier and flipped the spoil boards over so the heads of the bolts are below the surface and won't get hit by the bit. With everything put together, I connected the machine to a power source, inserted the TF card, and turned it on. The home screen displays information about coordinates and your Wi-Fi connection, which you can connect to through the tool option at the bottom. I don't have Wi-Fi in my workshop or a PC to dedicate to this machine yet, so I'll be working solely through the TF card and terminal display. The first thing that I wanted to do was test that the X, Y, and Z axes all move and in the right direction. Then I turned on the spindle to make sure that the variable speed controller worked.
Next, I move the spindle to the front left corner of the working area and click the XY clear button to zero the X and Y axes. Then moved it away and clicked the home button to make sure that it homes back to that same position. After everything was confirmed to work, I installed a 30 degree V bit in the spindle, making sure that more than half of the shank was secured in the chuck. Then I clamped a piece of HDPE plastic to the spoil boards. Next, I placed the provided Z-probe directly under the V-bit and on top of the HDPE and connected the alligator clip to the V-bit. Then I clicked the sculpture button to access the G-code test files that two trees put on the TF card and selected one of them. After the control screen opens, I click the knife button which causes the Z-axis to lower the V-bit until it barely touches the Z-probe so that it can measure its distance from the workpiece and zero its position. With the Z-axis zeroed, I moved the spindle over the front left corner of the HDPE to zero the X and Y axes in that position, and then I pressed the sculpture button again to start carving. The first file that I tried was just some simple text, and the second file was supposed to be a flower, but it didn't turn out quite right. As you can see, the text looks good, but the flower looks pretty stringy. I used the bit that Two Trees recommended for the file, but I'm not sure it was the right bit for that material, so I tried the same file again on a piece of birch plywood, which turned out much better. After having success with the test files, I decided to create a custom G-code to try. For that, I needed CAM software, and I chose Easel Pro for the job because it seemed to be the most affordable and user-friendly with good reviews. Since I just carved two files, I wanted to try cutting next, so I imported my channel logo as an SVG file to carve and cut out of a piece of 3 quarter inch birch plywood. Then I set the origin to the front left corner of the material and checked the cut settings. Easel has presets for feed rate, plunge rate, and depth per pass for different bits and materials. In this case, I'll be starting with a 1 16th inch 2 flute end mill bit, so I used the presets for that, which were 30 inches per minute for feed rate, 9 inches per minute for plunge rate, and a depth of 0 0.028 inches per pass. Unfortunately, it's not yet possible to set different processes up in different layers in ESOL, like you can with laser engraving software like Lightburn. So I set the total cut depth for this part of the job to 1 quarter inch and set the shape to outline, so the first stage is going to involve cutting the outline of the logo with the 1 16th inch bit to get good detail. Then I copy pasted the logo into another project file with most of the same settings, except I switched to a 1 8 inch 2 flute end mill bit to clear out the remaining material at a faster rate. And finally I made another file to cut a perimeter around the logo clean through the entire thickness of the plywood. Once everything was set, I exported all three G-code files to the TF card and inserted it into the machine. Then I clamped the plywood in place, zeroed the axes, and started cutting.
In total, it took around four hours to finish. The settings seem to work fine, but I think it would opt for a quarter inch bit to finish the fill next time and get it done a little quicker, and also use a down cutting bit for the outline. All of the bits that I have are up cutters, which causes splintering on the top surface of the workpiece because the cutting action is in an upward direction. That's fine if you want the bottom face to be splinter free, as you can see when I turn the piece around to show the back, but I'll need to get some down cutting bits to do this sort of work better in the future. Next, I wanted to try a more complicated 3D carving, so I inputted a 3D model of a northern pike to carve out of 3 quarter inch plywood. Easel generates two separate decodes to do 3D carving in two different stages. The first is for rough cutting the bulk of the material with a large bit. In this case I'm using a 1 8 inch 2 flute end mill bit. And the second is for finishing, which I chose a 30 degree V bit for. I used a feed rate of 30 inches per minute and a plunge rate of 9 inches per minute for both processes. But I chose a 40% step over for roughing and a 7% step over for finishing. Easel estimated the total processing time to be around 15 hours. I think a lower step over for finishing would have removed a lot of these tool marks, but it turned out pretty good regardless. Before I end the video, I wanted to try engraving a simple text into aluminum to see if this machine could handle it. I set the material parameters in easel, chose a 1 8 inch 2 flute end mill bit, and set the feed rate for 5 inches per minute, the plunge rate for 2 inches per minute, and the depth per pass at 0 .003 inches. Thank <laughs> you.
I think this turned out great. There was some tool chatter starting out, but that was cured with a few drops of cutting oil. The spindle wasn't overloaded at all, and it seemed to make clean straight cuts. But ideally, I would use a carbide bit for this, and probably wouldn't need the oil if I did. But the high-speed steel bit worked well enough for this test, despite the oil making a mess of the spoil boards. So that's it for this video, folks. Like I said at the beginning, this was my first time using a CNC router machine, so I can't really recommend it with confidence. All I can say is that I had a great experience with it, and I'm excited to learn more about it and put it to work in the shop. If you have any advice or CNC tips that you'd like to share, feel free to post them in the comments. If you are interested in getting this machine, then check out the links in the video description. Thanks for watching, and take care.